All right, we're going to uh, practice naming of some uh, coordination compounds. Um, the, uh, the first one here, we have the coordination complex as the cation, and then uh, we have the cyanide ion for the anion. Okay, so the cation must have what charge? Well, the cyanide is a negative 1. We have three of those, so that means this is negative 3. So the cation must be positive 3. So what's the charge of the metal? It's that positive 3 because the uh, ammonia is 0. All right, so we know we have a chromium 3 um, compound for the, uh, the cation. And um, if we... Uh, so, so what we need to do is first name the ligand, and then the metal, and then that for the cation, and then the anion. Okay, so this is amine. When it's as a ligand, we call ammonia amine, and this is hexaamine. So that's how we start it, hexaamine, and then chromium-3. in parentheses with Roman numerals, and then cyanide, that is the counter ion. All right, so there we go. We've named the cation and the anion, and we're done. All right, next we have um, another one. This time the uh, anion is the complex ion. So what is the charge of that anion? It must be a negative 3 to balance out the positive 3 from the 3 potassium. Right? So if this is a negative 3, um, what is the charge of the iron? Well, we have a negative 6 from those 6 cyanides. Each is a negative 1. So it must be plus 3. So that plus 3 minus 6 gives us the negative 3. Okay? So here we start off with the cation, so that's just potassium. And then we name the ligand first, so hexacyano iron, uh, or rather um, hex hexacyano. Remember we changed the ending from IDE, we drop the IDE and put an O. Hexacyano. And because this, the complex is as the anion, we're not going to use iron, we're actually going to use ferrate. We use the Latin terms when we can for the anion. And then we end it always, when it's in the anion, we end it in A-T-E. Okay, so hexacyanoferrate, and then we put in Roman numerals the charge for the iron. Okay, so... Um, when, it, when the complex ion is the anion, we change the metal ending to ATE. That's kind of like a period at the end of our sentence, just like the IDE is the period of the, at the end of the sentence, whereas when we have it in the middle, we put an O indicating there's more to come. Okay, so uh, potassium hexacyanoferrate 3. Potassium hexacyanoferrate uh, 3. Alright, now with this one you'll notice this isn't an ionic compound. Okay, it is a complex uh, compound but it's not an, uh, uh, an ionic compound where we have a cation and an anion. It just it balances out with the, the charges of the ligands. Okay, but we name it the same way as though this were a cation. Okay, so we have, we name the, the ligands first. Now we have multiple ligands this time, so we name them in alphabetical order. EN is short for ethylene diamine. By the way, if I were to give you one like this on the test, I would specify what the abbreviations mean. So this is ethylene diamine and this is thiocyanate, okay? So ethylene diamine comes first, and we just have one of those, so it's 
uh, just ethylene, diamine, and um, then we have two thiocyanate. So that's going to be dithiocyanate. And the ATE, um, just like with the cyano, you know, the cyan IDE, we change it to an O. Well, ATE, we just drop the E and make that an O. So thiocyanate, thiocyanato, and then we use the, uh, the copper and its charge. We have a negative one charge from the SCN, and um, so there would be two of those. That's a negative two. This is neutral, so that would be positive two. Okay, so that's it for that name. Um, just uh, um, ethylene, diamine, dithiocyanato, copper two. Okay. Now, um, just a, a note on the uh, use of the prefixes for the uh, thiocyanate ion. Um, you'll notice I've just used the regular di instead of using bis. There um, uh, is some ambiguity with regard to what uh, prefix to use there. Um, some textbooks uh, give it as one thing, others give it as another thing. What I'm going to say is to just lay out a, a hard and fast rule that uh, seems to be followed by and large, but not universally. And that is that we use the altered prefixes uh, like bis and tris and tetrakis and those. Um, we use those when there's uh, one of two circumstances, either the ligand is uh, has a, a diamine or, a, or a, a prefix of its own within the ligand name and we need to have more than one of those so like it would be bis ethylene diamine that would be one case and the other case is if the ligand is bidentate or polydentate okay meaning it has more than one uh, position where it attaches to the metal ion, okay? In that case, even if the ligand name does not have a Greek prefix in it, we would um, use the bis um, or the altered prefixes um, because it has, uh, it, because it's polydentate. But if it doesn't meet one of those two criteria, we'll just use the standard prefixes. So since thiocyanato or the thiocyanate ion is uh, monodentate and it um, does not have a prefix within the name, it doesn't meet those criteria. We just use the regular um, prefixes. Okay.